Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Speed here, and today we're gonna be looking at a Shadow Shaman replay. Also, I do want to mention that I'm gonna be doing an Animage replay on the Game Leap website for this literal exact same game. So if you see him popping off during this replay, you can go check that out. But either way, why do I want to talk about Shadow Shaman? This hero is wild. Currently, it's being first phase picked by teams like LGD, right? One of the best teams in the world. And there's a couple of reasons why. The hero is a great laner, but that's been the case for a while. Honestly, the main one right now is I would say the priority of the mid tier one tower for basically every single professional team in Dota. Shaman gives you an easy way to do that, but most importantly is the ability to force a favorable Roshan engagement or just the ability to take Roshan. Shaman is the best Rosh hero in Dota. I'm not just saying that. You might be like, Speed, what about Ursa? It's like, yeah, but the problem about Ursa right now is a Roche taking hero is if you see an Ursa on the enemy team, you're often gonna think, oh, he's gonna Roche. You see a Shaman, you're not thinking he's gonna Roche. Who thinks that? No one thinks that. So that's something to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at what he does. Before we get into today's video, I wanna quickly tell you about today's sponsor, which is Manscaped. They were kind enough to send me some free stuff. I highly recommend it to you guys as well. The first thing is the Manscaped lawnmower. Uh, it's rechargeable, it works in the shower. You can use the shave your balls extremely easy to use. I've had limited problems with it, so I can't recommend it enough. The next thing is the shampoo and conditioner and the body wash. These I'm using literally every single day. Um, they smell very nice. Like for the majority of my life and for, probably for a lot of you guys, you kind of just smell like a teenage boy. You know what I mean? It's like the Axe body wash that you just smell all over your, your gym's locker room. Get some stuff that actually smells nice. My girlfriend, yes, I actually have. You guys might not believe it. I have a girlfriend. She says it smells extremely nice. I fully agree. I love the way it smells. Gives me some confidence as well. So if you're interested in buying these products, use the link down below to go check it out. And if you use code SPEED while checking out, you can get 20% off and free shipping. And I'll see you guys there. All right, so in terms of starting items here, he's got a Boots Tango Ward buildup. The main idea of his current laning stage is to run around and block camps and roam. He's landing with an Underlord against the Life Stealer. Thinking about that matchup, because this is how you itemize as, as a position four. You have to think about often uh, your matchup to the position five and then how the interaction between your off laner and the safe laner works. Underlord against Life Stealer is AFK as hell, right? Nothing happens in this lane nine times out of 10. It's pretty AFK. Life Stealer can try to pressure Underlord, but you can't really do too much about it. You can at level one, but in general, he wants to put a much higher priority on securing runes for the Kunkka blocking pull camps, and trying to give Underlord as much XP as possible, and Boots does that best. However, if it was, let's say, they were against maybe a Morphling, he would have a bit more pressure potential. Not too much, but a bit more, and so he can, in that case, go like Windlace, Two Branches, Tango, Salve, Clarity, right? A much more regen-based build. So in terms of the landing stage, Shaman is pretty simple. The main thing you want to do at level 1 is secure the range creep, right? Your 74 base damage, 4 armor, is insane at level one. And you really wanna use this as your ability to make sure that this creep does not get denied. After this creep does not get denied, and you can even ether shock it, you can even auto attack ether shock it, then you're basically just gonna trade with the position four. One of the downsides of Shadow Shaman as a hero is that his attack range is really bad. It's 400, which is one of the lowest. I think it's like almost the lowest, right? Witch Doctor is 600. Right, so you are horrible when it comes to your attack range. And therefore, what you do is you almost just always play this tree line, this tree line, and this tree line. The key to Shaman is playing the tree line. Your bad attack range will be abused by competent players or players who just accidentally play correctly, <laughs> which happens a lot. And so, yeah, the only reason why I think he's playing the left here is because he probably feels that giving the Life Stealer a direct 1v1 with Underlord is not a great idea. I will admit this is honestly a little bit surprising to me. I, I guess to some extent, part of the reason why he might be doing this is because the Brewmaster cannot follow him. If the Brewmaster was to try to trade with him when he runs to here, the Brewmaster would tank the wave and just be in the middle of two heroes. And as a melee hero, that definitely doesn't work. All right, next up, let's take a look at Zin Q here, getting first blood on the Brewmaster. Let's really nitpick every little mechanical, you know, play he makes here. So snipes a courier. Cool thing about Shaman is you can one shot couriers. After that, he's going to walk over, he's going to hit, and then he's going to move. So I think here he wasn't sure if he wanted to commit to the kill. The reason why this is important is you don't want to just spam Aether Shock when you have low mana. When you have full mana, you should almost always just hit Nuke, use one of your spells, and move on. But in this case, he doesn't know if he's going to commit to this kill yet. He doesn't know if the Brew is going to commit. And so he was a little bit hesitant because you might want to use two Shackles instead of an Aether Shock and a Shackles. So he's kind of kiting here. Once the Brew kind of shows that he's going to look to commit to this trade, he will eventually 
hit and nuke. However, you'll see that he's going to trade out here a little bit. I'm just going to replay it real quick. He's going to hit and move in between every auto. When you buy boots, if you don't move in between auto attacks, you should not go this item build. You're not understanding what makes it useful. You're not really getting the distance in between autos. You're not going to close the gap. If you're against a ranged hero, boots help you close the gap and prevent you from getting kited due to your poor movement speed and low attack range. But once the brew shows that he's committing, he's going to do uh, his eventual combo. Goes for a shackle here, which heals him up goes in for the nuke and gets the kill. Uses the nuke actually at the end. A couple more things to note about the laning stage before we move on is he did pick up a salve, a sentry, and a stick as some of his early items. So I definitely recommend you buy these items as well. If you don't buy stick, you're gonna have, you know, infinite mana problems. You will not be able to cast your spells. If you do not buy salve, your offlaner is going to get uh, tilted. <laughs> and if you don't buy sentries and wards, well, you're not gonna have vision, so. Yeah. The next thing I do want to note is that at the four minute mark here, he goes for the water rune. Um, if you're wondering when you should contest water rune and when you should contest the lane, uh, here's what you need to think about. Number one, do you pressure the safe laner? In this case, the answer is no. Like, how are they going to pressure this lifestealer at this point? He's going to shackle him. The lifestealer is just going to man up and out heal them. Like, it, it doesn't work. OK, and so he understands that Underlord doesn't pressure this guy. And he understands that the mid matchup is a bottle heavy matchup. What I mean by that is both heroes buy bottle. And if one hero gets a rune and the other doesn't, that is a massive advantage. So him shifting over to mid here is a really important step in this game. Because now the TA is going to have relatively limited mana in relation to this Kunkka, who now will have, you know, as many spells and extra HP. So that's just a really important to note. If your lane can be abandoned, uh, where you don't have kill potential and mid is a double bottle lane, which often it is, not always, but often it is, this is a really key step in the game to having a ton of impact. So next up, he goes for a very heavy movement speed based item build. Uh, he goes Tranquils and Windlace. And I think the main reason for a build like this is primarily because you essentially can always move around the map. You can always find a gank, you can always find an opportunity and you can stay on the map. The only thing you have to keep in mind about an item build like this is you need to buy the occasional clarity and you have to have a stick. Obviously, you should buy a stick for the lane regardless of whether or not you go mana boots or tranquils, but this is very important. You will have to buy mana items throughout the game. On top of that, notice how he is sapping mid. When you are an underleveled shadow shaman with weak lanes, you sap XP. You stack and you sap XP. I cannot stress this enough. The amount of players who are playing Shadow Shaman and then complain to me or playing support and complain to me, they're like, speed, my lanes suck. I can't kill anybody. It's like, okay, then you probably have farming heroes. You know what farming heroes like Kunkka and Underlord and Animage like? Stacks. You know what they also like? A level six Shadow Shaman who can roche for that. Do that. Right? Do that, and you will have a lot more impact. So we'll see here, he's gonna sap mid a little bit. I think he heads over, gets some wards down, right? You know, you're very fast, so you're very good at warding as well. Kind of looks top. I guess he's looking for an opportunity to kill this um, life stealer. But also, cool thing here is he actually uses the Underlord portal to get to the bottom side of the map. After that, they take the portal back to the top. Pretty cool, man. Uh, the things you can do with Underlord is unbelievable. I think a lot of more teams need to think about Underlord as a hero. I believe it's conceptually actually much better than people give it credit for. But um, either way, he's going to now go mid and get more XP. He's got a 1-1-3 build. The reason why he's doing this is clearly he just values Shackles as an ability. I will admit, I think the most common build is a 1-2-2 build to make sure Hex is long enough to get off Shackles after casting Snakes. But either way, he goes for a heavy build into Shackles, and you can do the same. Another thing to note is that the instant Tome and the instant Smoke based around Tome is crucial to this hero. We'll see here around the 10 minute mark, he's going to look to pressure the mid tower. Unfortunately, he got his tome a little bit late, so he was not able to take the tower with the tome. And on top of that, he actually drops his snakes offensively for a kill. In the early game, you should use snakes basically as much as you can. If it's going to get you a kill or get you a tower, I would drop the snakes. And fortunately, this case, actually, this was a pretty unfortunate usage of snakes. He basically got nothing out of it uh, at the end of the day. But the main concept here is that you do just want to get them out. If you ever hold snakes for more than 20 to 30 seconds, you are bad. <laughs> and like, yes, there's exceptions to this, right? But as a really important rule of thumb to improving as a Dota player, when you are a hero like Shaman that has so many options, if you can't find one of the options, because these options are a kill, a tower, or Roche. If you can't find any of those options, you're probably just bad. 
So another thing to note here is once again, when your ulti is down, your hero for the most part is pretty mediocre. Shaman is just not that good. Your cast ranges are literal dog doo doo. You're, you're, you're a miserable hero for the most part. And so he actually stacks the, the ancient camp into farming the top lane. Once again, guys, it's okay to take XP. Goes for a max Shaka build this game. I think a main reason why he does it is there's very low ways for the enemy team to cancel Shackle. If Brew is not split, the only way for them to cancel it is actually DK stun. So they only have one really proper way to do that. And so he's very likely to get a long duration Shackle off. So I like the concept here. But if the enemy team has a lot of stuns, I think maxing the Hex or the Aether Shock, especially if there are a lot of high armor heroes, even like this game, maxing Aether Shock can be a good idea. Next up, one thing to note as well is Tumblr's toy is the best item on this hero by a freaking long shot. You might be like, what about Keen Optic? It's like Keen Optic's good. It's not Tumblr's toy in the early game. The mana pool is unbelievable. It's extremely useful for this hero. The ability to hop forward is way more cast range than Keen Optic. Yes, it does technically kind of put you out of position, but it is what it is. This hero has bad cast ranges. We're going to see him set up mid here. Right, drop the Serpent Wards, kill off the Nether Ward with the Serpent Wards. Really good heads up play there. And as we talked about, no good way to cancel out the Shackles. Full duration Shackles into the mid tower. It does not get better than that. A mid gank into the tier one tower is as good as it gets for Shaman in the early game. The most important tower, a kill. It's beautiful stuff. After that, we are going to see one of our first smokes of the game. The reason why I like this smoke play is the enemy team is very spread out. If we look at the map, the enemy team, right? They just took the mid tower. Lifestealer shows top. DK shows mid, TA shows bottom. They're very, very split up. It's definitely a great opportunity to look for a pick off in one of the lanes. On top of that, with Serpent Wards being down, they can't really go for a major objective, and therefore a kill, a pick off, is their best bet. It's, well, their only bet, kind of. And so, yeah, they find a kill onto what I would argue the best hero is in the game, and that's really good. All right, finally at the 15 minute mark, which, by the way, you do not need to wait till 15 minutes to Roche. If you have a hero that can infinitely tank Roche, like Timber or Lone Druid, you can take Roche at minute eight. I'm not just saying that. You might be thinking, I'm not I'm not just saying that. You can take Roche at minute eight. And so yeah, as we'll see here, the enemy team being a professional team does understand that Shadow Shaman does mean Roche. So they are gonna end up contesting it here. But the main reason why they're going for this play is the primal split was used. The major team fight ability for Team Aster is on cooldown. So things like that are really important to note. The enemy team uses Ravage or Kunkka Boat or you know, uh, black hole, things like this, right? If they commit their big spells and your team does not, you should identify that as an opening and use that to Roche. Or, as I talked about, you can just sneak it. In pubs, sneaking Roche works like nine out of 10 times, especially if you're a Shadow Shaman plus a tanky hero, no one's gonna expect it. It's gonna work almost every time. And so just please keep that in mind as a play in your toolkit. All right, next up, I'd like to talk about blink usage. People suck at using blink, really. As we're watching this clip here, notice how he walks up to the Brewmaster and hex him, all right? Why is he going to do this? Why would he walk up and hex him? This might seem kind of wild. It's because he doesn't know he's here. You don't need to catch them off guard. You don't need to catch a like a support Brewmaster kill off guard. Okay, you, don't, you already see him. You don't need to. So you might be like, why not blink anyway? Because then you can blink out. If you're playing on a ward and you can lead with Hex Shackle without having to blink, you can blink out. Now, he doesn't end up being able to blink out here. Unfortunately, he gets stunned, but you get the point, right? That is the reason why you do that. There are situations where you literally should not blink in. That's one thing I wanted to note. As well, when you do blink in, which we'll cover in a later team fight, you don't want to just kill yourself right away unless it's a very important kill and you're kind of just in the moment. All right, so next up, he goes for the Shard. If you don't know what Shaman Shard does, it increases the cast range of Shackles and spawns four Serpent Wards for seven seconds on it. The reason why this is good is you can use the clear side lanes, as we'll see here. It just allows you to basically one shot creep waves, even with no points in Aether Shock or low points in Aether Shock. And that's why I like this Hex Shackle build a lot more nowadays, because you can buy the shard and still have wave clear in pubs. So you can be this like ultra disable hero and have the ability to wave clear, which is like a big thing I love about Shaman, especially when people would max Aether Shock. So huge fan of this blink into shard build. I also love Aether into shard. I personally even like Aether and Shard better in most games. I think this game, his team has no blink initiator. Like literally they don't have one. So he is kind of assuming the role of the guy who needs to get on top of the key hero. Also on top of that, the enemy team doesn't have like a, they kind of lack heroes that he can't like blink dodge. You know what I mean? If a lot of heroes on the enemy team try to go on him, he can blink away. And so that's another reason why blink can be good. But I think it's mostly just because his team doesn't have a blink initiator. But let's watch this team fight. I love this execution from Zinq here. A lot of patience, okay? Um, a lot of patience. Patience, honestly, is probably the name of the game here. 
and his underlord gets gone on. He's just staying on the outside. He understands, okay, my team took a bad fight. Little, you know, poor engagement. It is what it is. I just need to wait. It's all about going on people that your team can follow up, right? If, if your team has to extend through four heroes to catch who you go on, or has to jump into no vision, you're probably just killing them. So as we'll see in this team fight, it's going to wait for his underlord to walk up here. Obviously, you do not want to try to initiate into no vision. That's not a good idea. In fact, that's the worst idea in almost every single mid to late game Dota 2 team fight. And uh, yeah, let's watch this continue to play out. So he's going to drop the Serpent Words, clearly trying to force the Roshan. Look at how much damage. That is two sets of autos from the Snakes doing, I would say, like a tw like a little above, maybe an 18th of Roche's health. I mean, that's just insane. Next up, we're going to watch him go on to the Brew here. I think he didn't expect for his Blink to get cancelled because... Otherwise, the reason why him shackling like this is good is because he can blink out if DK tries to stun him. He'll be waiting for it. In fact, I think he was. You'll see kind of based on his camera movement that he sort of panics because the nether ward canceled his blink. So he's like, oh, I can blink out. That's why he kind of moves back like this. But unfortunately, he didn't have his blink up. And luckily, he gets four staffed. So obviously, really nice four staff. And now he's just going to have to wait a little bit. Right, BKB up from the DK, understands that the life stealer is a little bit too far out here. Once again, not a lot of cancels for shackles. And that's what happens here. Beautiful disarm onto the TA to prevent uh, the Shaman from going down. It gets a Hex onto the TA as well. And it's just a beautiful team fight from here on out. So I think that's an incredible display of essentially patience from the Shaman. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, that was crazy. <laughs> that was a beautiful display of patience from the Shadow Shaman. And I think most players just don't understand the concept. They might understand what I'm saying to like an extent, but man, if you guys, if you're messing up team fights over and over again you're causing your team to overextend or jumping people that can't even be bursted you're, you're probably just griefing games as a support over and over again and that's why when people are like i don't know how to have, have impact as a support it's because it's honestly not as easy like to an extent right because like things like this are not necessarily that clear but they are just as important as hitting creeps and hitting a four item timing on an anti mage and it really is just as important all right and finally to end off the video i just want to briefly mention his items Notice how he doesn't buy Aghanim Scepter. <laughs> stop buying that item. All right, guys, stop. All right, I, I beg you, it's horrendous. That item is so bad. It just split shots these Serpent Wards and like, they just don't do that much damage. Like, late game, they just, if, if a hero has a decent amount of armor, they hit for like 40 against melee heroes. It's pathetic. So please do not buy Ags. Don't buy Ags. You might be thinking, oh, but I need to 1v9. It's like, you 1v9 by living and getting off three shackles that last for full duration and then forced effing your anti-mage. That's how you 1v9. You don't 1v9 by making your Serpent Ward split shot. All right, in terms of talents, you get Hex cooldown at level 10. I think that's non-negotiable. I think at level 15, yeah, I think shackle duration is just better. Unless you really think there's like no way you get a max shackle off, which the thing is, there's always going to be an edge case for when you can. It's like if you pick someone off in a side lane and there's no one around, you're going to get a max shackle. So I think shackle duration is just almost always better. At level 20, this one kind of depends. If your team really needs to do Siege Towers, you can take the Serpent Ward's max HP. If, like you really have no other hero to do it, you can. But in general, I would say Hex Breaks, especially in a game like this. It's pretty cool. Works against the Life Stealer. Works against the TA, kind of. It's just a bit weird. It's like when they're Hexed, it often doesn't matter if they're broken. It's only good against heroes like Huskar and DK and Timbersaw. Heroes like this who like use their abilities defensively, their passives defensively. So in some games, it's okay. Um, I would say both these talents are like kind of underwhelming, unless it's a really good game for a break. At level 25, I think the Aether Shock damage is generally better, which sounds crazy, but it just lets you like one shot creep waves or bring the creep waves low and have some burst damage. Ward's attack damage 25 in the late game is so underwhelming. Even if you have like, I guess if you have like Refresher, like if the game goes really late and you have like Refresher and you get an Ag Synth from Roche, it's like, okay, fine. You can take the, the Ward's attack damage. But all right, getting into this team fight, we'll see him jump in here. So obviously you can put your body on the line, gets a really nice Hex onto the Pugna, a beautiful Shackles, has the Ghost Scepter going as well, so he does not end up going down to the Life Stealer. This enables him to get almost a full duration Shackle off, and it's a beautiful team fight from ZingQ. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.